All right, Frank, we're back again. We're at this machine. It's the only one of its kind that Fuji America offers with a single spindle and a single turret, I believe. We still got the gantry. We got the parts over here. We even have a Renishaw equator on this side, but there's more to, how do they say? More to meets the eye to this machine because the capabilities and possibilities exist all over the place and what else can be done. Even though it has, comes in at a great price point and it's kind of a job shop focused type of machine, there's more to it, right? Oh, absolutely. This is one of our most economical models, and again, flexibility built into the machine, so it's kind of have it your way. Do you need simple or do you need more complex? So, you know, here, as you mentioned, we have a single turret, single spindle, but we're using our work stocker, and it's available with or without a gantry loader, right? And you can have, once again, as many automation options as you need for your process. So this particular process for this customer is requiring the gantry loader because they don't want to have an operator operating it. They right. want it to run unattended and they want us to measure the parts, so that, therefore we have the Renishaw equator here. So, the, you know, in essence, the robot will pick up the raw material, it'll machine it, it'll bring it to the table in the Renishaw equator, drop it off, that'll bring it in, the Renishaw will do its thing, it'll comp it for the next part, and it will bring that part, if that part is good, it will bring it back to the work stocker. So this is, and we offer different solutions, right? This is what we call an in-out work stocker. So we can take the raw material in, and we can take the finished material out. Or we can have a dedicated work stocker that we have just in and out too, for example. So, so in essence, again, a total complete solution here where we're machining the part complete, we're measuring it, and we're bringing back a finished part without an operator. Well, per usual, Frank, I got a million questions to ask because my curiosities run wild when I see things like this. Uh, the first one is, you mentioned optional gantry loader, right? right? Does that mean if I wanted to do a bar feed on the end, I could do something like that? Absolutely. Okay, so, so I can get creative in that aspect. Absolutely. So that's something that we really didn't dabble in, but you know, we know we needed to add more flexibility, especially for shops who adopted that early automation, bar right. loaders automation, just early automation, right? Uh, and so we incorporated that now into our machine, especially this platform machine, where you can have a bar feeder option if you want. Bar feeder with parts catcher and a parts conveyor. What if I wanted a bar feeder and a gantry, and even though I'm a single spindle, single turret, and I wanted to run an OP10 and an OP20, you see I'm getting creative with this yeah, now. Yeah. Can I have, because I don't see a whole lot of bar feeders and machines out there that will pick up a part with a gantry and then do side B on the same setup. Is all of this creativity possible or am I just getting too wild No, now? no, it's absolutely possible. I mean, a bar load can load the material to the chuck, right? We're machining that part. Uh, you know, we cut it off. We can, we can pick it up with the, with the gantry robot possibly, right? Or we, or we may have to figure out some kind of platform there, but it's absolutely possible wow. to take it. And then it's possible to turn the part over, you know, with a turnover station, which we offer as an automation option and do the second out. That's incredible. Yeah, so now I want to kind of come to an end of this conversation and talk about the measuring system, sure. right? So now after I've explored all the world of creativities and bar fees and gantries and OP10s and OP20s, we're getting to the finished product. And we all know that there's a lot of walk away time these days because operators are running three, four, five, ten machines and getting paid more to do so. Thank goodness. A great job to those folks out there. Um, but what I want to bring up is if there is, happens to be maybe a dull tool, a dull cutting tool, or maybe a live tool in a drill or something like that breaks, right? And the part comes here and that part would be considered more or less, say, a failed part, right? it automatically compensates for the next part that's going in without an operator running another machine on the other side of the shop floor and does all of that work for me as well? Absolutely, absolutely correct. So wow. we can offer it with feedback or without feedback, right? So, so that feedback would automatically adjust the offset, but you can choose to have it without feedback and do it manually if you'd like to. And we just bring that part to a quality inspection suite. Okay, I have one more question. Sure. Can I have 10? Absolutely. <laughs> got them in stock and ready to go. I'm going to start my own machine shop now. I need about 10 of these bad boys. Frank, thank you so much. My For pleasure. everyone watching, I'm truly learning with every single interview with Frank. It truly is flexibility, reliability, shops that are made, machines that are made for shops that run 365 days a year, 24 seven, but could also participate in job shops, high mix, low volume. And you, you get to play that game of what works best for me let me call Frank, let me call Fuji, they can make it happen from the measurements at the end on operators on the other side of the floor, getting more done in a day's time. Time is the most valuable commodity that any of us have and it looks like these guys have figured out how to make the most of our time in a machine shop. Frank, thank you so much my friend. My pleasure. Truly my pleasure. a pleasure thank brother. Thank you Tony. My pleasure.